All right, in this next section of chapter 11, we want to look at uh, phase changes and the energy that's required to do these phase changes. So um, we will find, uh, uh, if we look at an energy diagram, so here we've got an energy diagram of, uh, of some substance, it's a generic substance, and um, you'll see that in order to convert a solid into a liquid, we have to add energy to that. That means that is an endothermic process. If we convert a liquid into a solid, that is an exothermic process. We have to remove heat to make that happen, so freezing. Uh, likewise, if we want to convert a liquid into a gas, we have to add heat, so vaporization. And if we uh, remove heat, then that would be uh, if we uh, do condensation, convert the gas into a liquid, uh, that is going to require that we remove heat, and that will be exothermic. Uh, in a similar fashion, uh, it is possible to convert a, a solid directly into a gas. When that occurs, we call that sublimation. That's what happens with carbon dioxide uh, when we have dry ice. It gets converted directly into, uh, into the gas phase. Uh, and then if, uh, if we take a gas and convert that into a solid, we call that deposition. Well, I want you to know each of these terms. So I want you to know each of these terms and be familiar with them um, yeah, because we're going to use, uh, we're going to use these, uh, these terms and, and um, use it to do some math. All right. When we look at... When we look at the amount of energy that it takes to convert something from solid to liquid and then from liquid to gas, we'll always see that the heat of vaporization, which is the energy required to convert a liquid into a gas, that that heat of vaporization is always greater than the heat of fusion. The reason for that is that uh, when we're melting something, all we have to do is to increase the temperature of the molecules enough so that they can slide past each other. When we're vaporizing something, we have to completely overcome all of the intermolecular forces to get something to vaporize. And that, that is the key difference there. So that is the key difference. Uh, and then you'll see that the heat of sublimation, which is the, the amount of heat that is required to convert a solid into, into a gas, that that's always going to be equal to the heat of fusion plus the heat of vaporization. Right. So now we want to look at some heating curves. Heating curves are simply, uh, um, they are diagrams to help us determine how much energy does it take um, to increase the temperature of something and for it to go through a phase change. On this diagram, all, all of the vertical segments, well, first of all, let's look at the x-axis is heat and the y-axis is the temperature. Um, this one is for ice, for just regular uh, water. All right, and so all of the vertical segments are segments where we're increasing the temperature of a substance so we're increasing the temperature of a substance that is not at one of its uh, melting point or boiling point. So here we're increasing the temperature of ice uh, uh, from negative 25 up to zero degrees Celsius. Once the temperature of the ice gets to zero degrees Celsius, any additional heat that we add to it is going to convert that ice into liquid. So here uh, at point B, we have 100% ice, and at point C, we have 100% liquid. Once all of that ice is melted, any additional heat that we add to it is going to increase the temperature of that water. And you'll see that that point ends at the boiling point, and that is 100 degrees Celsius for water. Well, at point D, we have 100% water, and at point E, we have 100% steam. All right, you'll notice that that is a big number because the enthalpy of vaporization is always a fairly large number. Here, uh, any additional heat that we add to that gas phase water or the steam is just simply going to increase the temperature of that steam. All right, so it'll increase the temperature.
All right. So you'll notice during the phase changes that the temperature does not change. Now, after we do this, I'm going to show you something. Um, this isn't quite true, and I'll explain why that is here in just a moment. What we want to do is we want to be able to calculate how much heat is contributed or how much heat we have to add to get through each of these segments from A to B, B to C, C to D, and so on and so forth. Well, for the vertical lines, they all have uh, very similar equations. Um, we've seen this equation before. Q is mass times specific heat times delta T. So Q, uh, Q is the amount of heat to get from A to B, so QAB. Mass is the mass of our substance. Uh, S is the specific heat, uh, in this case the solid. And delta T is the change in temperature. All right. Uh, the next segment, because we don't have a temperature change, uh, we can't have a delta T in there. And so this is the amount of heat that's required to convert the solid into the liquid phase. And uh, usually it's going, the delta H is going to be in kilojoules per mole. And so N is simply going to be the number of moles. So we'll need to convert our mass into moles, which is a pretty easy calculation to do. All right, uh, so next, uh, Q from C to D. Uh, again, it's a vertical segment, so it's mass times specific heat times delta T. Here, the specific heat is the liquid instead of the gas, or instead of the solid. And delta T is the, is the change in temperature from here to there. This delta T is gonna be different than this delta T, so we'll need to pay close attention when we're picking out those numbers. Our next segment uh, is from D to E. Uh, again, because it's a phase change, the temperature does not change. And so the number of moles times the enthalpy of vaporization, uh, and that will give us how much heat is there. Usually, that is our biggest number. If, if we do a calculation that includes this part, that's going to be our biggest number. And then um, from E to F, similar to the A to B and the C to D, calculation uh, is going to be uh, uh, mass times specific heat of the gas this time times delta T. And then if you want to know how much energy does it take or how much heat does it take to get from A all the way to F, you simply add all of those together. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do, uh, except you may not have to add all five equations together, you may get a smaller segment. So you have to read the question carefully so that you understand what is going on. So we're going to look at number 40. All right, so here is number 40, and I'm gonna need to adjust my camera there just a second. Okay, and I've got my calculator here uh, so that you guys can see uh, when I'm doing calculations. All right, so um, so we've got this compound, uh, C2Cl3F3, we're given the molar mass, has a normal boiling point of 47.6 degrees Celsius. The specific heats of the liquid and gas are given here, that's good to know. And the heat of vaporization, that's the enthalpy of vaporization for the compound, is 27.49 kilojoules per mole. Now we want to calculate the heat required to convert 25 grams of this substance from a liquid at five degrees Celsius to a gas at 82. So we're starting off at a liquid and we're converting it into the gas phase. That means we're gonna have one phase change in our, in our process here. Since our boiling point is at 47.6, this is what our, our uh, heating curve is going to look like. All right, so our temperature we'll put on the y-axis and our heat on the x-axis. So we're going to start down here at 5 degrees Celsius, so 5.00 degrees Celsius. We're going to increase the temperature up to the boiling point. That boiling point is 47.6, so we'll say that's 47.6. We're going to convert that liquid into the gas phase, and then 
we're going to increase the temperature from 47.6 up to 82 degrees Celsius. So we'll call that 82.0 degrees Celsius. All right, so we've got three segments. Uh, one where we're increasing the temperature of the liquid, one where we're converting the liquid in the gas, into the gas phase, and one where we're converting the, uh, uh, where we're increasing the temperature of the gas. So we can write this as three separate equations. And I'm going to call this one Q1, Q2, and Q3. All right, so let's calculate Q1 first. So Q1 is the mass times the specific heat of the liquid times delta T. All right. Well, our mass was 25.0 grams. The specific heat of our liquid is given here as 0 0.91 joules per gram Kelvin. So 0 0.91 joules per gram Kelvin. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that we don't need to convert from Kelvin to Celsius or Celsius to Kelvin because we're talking about a change in temperature. So for this equation, a one degree change, a one degree Celsius change in temperature is equal to a one Kelvin change in temperature. So you could make that joules per gram degree Celsius and that would work just as well. All right, and now uh, for our change in temperature, we went from 5 up to 47.6. So I'm going to put 47.6 uh, degrees Celsius minus 5.00 degrees Celsius. And that gives us our change in temperature. All right, so now we simply want to uh, punch, the, punch the numbers into the calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and do the temperature change first. So 47.6 minus 5. All right, so that, that part is 42.6 times uh, 0.91 times 25. All right, and we've got, see, 3, 2, and 3 sig figs. Um, uh, so we should have 2 sig figs in our answer. Uh, I'm going to write it down as 969 joules, um, and then we'll put that into kilojoules, so 0 0.969 kilojoules, but then we're going to go ahead and round that to two sig figs and call it 0 0.97 kilojoules. All right, so that gives us our first uh, segment, that's Q1. So now what I want to do is um, we'll do Q2. Let's see how this color looks here. Q2. Yeah, it's not too bad. All right, so for Q2, uh, which is this segment, um, here we want the number of moles times the enthalpy of vaporization. And the enthalpy of vaporization was given right here at 27.49 kilojoules per mole. The only real calculation we need to do here to really to get us uh, um, so that we can do do this is we need to convert the 25 grams into moles. And you'll notice I gave you the molar mass. If I didn't give you the molar mass, you could of course just use your periodic table uh, to calculate that. So 25.0 grams. We're going to multiply that or divide by 187.37 grams per mole. All right, that converts it into moles. And then the delta H of uh, vaporization is 27.49 kilojoules per mole. And so there you'll see that the moles cancel out. So now we'll just come over here and do the calculation. 25 divided by 187.37. Hit enter. So that's the number of moles. And now I'm just going to multiply that by 27.49. All right. And that gives us 3.6678 uh, 
Um, we've got three sig figs here, so we're just going to round that to 3.67 kilojoules. All right, so there we've got 3.67 and uh, 0 0.97. So now, so now we're going to do Q3. And for Q3, uh, it'll be the mass times the specific heat of the gas times delta T. This delta T is going to be different because it's the temperature change from 47.6 up to 82 degrees Celsius. So um, it's going to be a different delta T. Also, the specific heat of the gas is going to be different. Um, it's at 0.67 rather than the 0.91. The mass will be the same, so 25.0 grams times uh, 0 0.67 joules per gram Kelvin. And then our change in temperature is going to be 82.0 degrees Celsius minus 47.6 degrees Celsius. All right, and so now we'll just punch those numbers in. So 82 minus 47.6, that gives us 34.4 for that part of it. So times 0.67 times 25, and that gives us 576. So, so 576 joules, which is 0. 576 kilojoules. Since we only have two sig figs, we're going to round that to 0 0.58. Uh, uh, so yeah, we'll make that 0 0.58 and transpose my numbers there. So 0 0.58 kilojoules. All right, so now we're finally ready to add all of these together to give us Q total. So Q total is going to be Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. So Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. And then we'll just put all those numbers in. So 0 0.97 kilojoules plus uh, 3.67 kilojoules plus uh, 0 0.58 kilojoules. All right, so 0 0.97 plus 3.67 plus uh, 0 0.58. And that gives us 5.22 kilojoules. All right. And so that is how we solve that particular problem.